Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. I'd like to spend a little bit of time with you talking about style on the canvas. So style is used much like it's used in CSS and HTML, where we get to apply a style, and then whatever gets made uh, with that selected uh, will get that style. And so it's an efficiency. All right, let's have a look at the About section of Zim. We're at zimjs.com. I'm clicking under the About here, where we get some information about Zim, including features. There's styles for all objects, like CSS. And we come on down a little bit further. This is the archives right here, and we can see there's Zim 10, Zim 9, Zim Neo. There's Zim 8 introduce style for CSS-like styles. So that was introduced in Zim Oct. And you can get a bit of a history there if you want. Indeed, back on the Zim site, if you go to devs, right here, way down in devs, here's all of the things that were launched in Zim Cat, Zim 10, Neo and 8 has style there. Hep is 7. 6v, 4th, try, duo, and 1. So you're welcome to look at those at your leisure. Click through and they'll go to the docs entry. Right, let's see an example of style then. We can see that under examples here. Uh, we can scroll down or we can hit collections. And in collections, there it is right there. CSS for canvas. Now be warned, this is going to be very pink. You might want to close your eyes and open them slowly. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend um, this color scheme, but it's showing that we can style all of these components from uh, by just using styles. As a matter of fact, take a look. I'll view the page source here. Uh, by the way, to view the page source, you can't right click on the canvas itself because it's a big image. If you did, you could save it as an image, but I right clicked off of the canvas on the left hand side here and then I can view page source or indeed control U at any time and you can see the source. This won't be color syntaxing so we won't stay here long but I'll just show you down here. Look. New button, slider, tabs, stepper, etc. There they all are and we don't even pass any parameters into them nor did we even position them or add them. All of that is being done up here in very much like CSS type styles. Background color pink, roll background color blue in this style. So let's go do that ourselves with some color syntaxing right from the start, shall we? <laughs> Yay! All right, reduce this down. We're in a Zim template. Oh, yeah. we'll bring this back. We're in a Zim template. Let me show you where to get that template from again. Back on the Zim site, zimjs.com, press on code, and right there, copy. That copies the template. So here is that template, and what we'll do is we'll make a button, a new button, and dot center that on the stage, and we'll have a look. Refresh here. So there's a button. And it has rounded corners. It's orange with the lighter orange white text. So that's a default button. We can say uh, change the corner. Uh, if we wanted to with normal parameters, we would have to go null because we'll leave the basic width. We'll go null because we'll leave the height. We'll go null because we'll leave the label, etc., etc., etc. And eventually we would get to a place where there's a corner parameter. Or we can use the Zim Duo technique and go there directly corner of zero. So we save that up and now there's our corner of zero. If we had another button, we'll center that, we'll move it zero in the X and 100 down, uh, we would have to put a corner of zero. So now both of those buttons have a corner of zero. And we might want a background color, background color of red. And now the first one's going to get a background color of red, 
but if we wanted that on the second one, we would have to put that there as well. So do you see where we can, you know, we're looking at this going, uh, okay. <laughs> it would have been nice if I could have just applied these with a style and just made a button and have them read the style. And that's exactly what we did in Zim Oct. It was pretty amazing to tell you the truth. Because we already had the Zim Duo technique of this in place, all we really needed to do was work out a system where we pulled that out like that. We stored it in style. We spell it. That's a style constant, all capital letters. Style is equal to that. And we don't apply it in any of these like so. And are you ready? There they are. They're both red or indeed purple. Now they're both purple. It took us it took us a day to apply styles to the canvas. It took us about a week to finalize all of all of it and stuff like that. But that's because we already pretty well had it with the Zim Duo technique. All we have to do now is say when you make a button, check to see if there's a style that has the stuff that will apply to the button. Indeed, we run into a little bit of a problem here in that we may have um, we may have something else that we don't want uh, to be purple or with a background color of purple. Let's see what else has a background color. A label does, I guess. We could make a label or is there something more visual? I'm just trying to think. Um, I can't remember if a waiter, well, we don't, I don't want to be looking at a waiter. A slider doesn't really have a background color. I can't remember if a dial does. Let's try a dial. New dial dot center and we'll dot um, move that dial up a little bit. Zero comma minus 150. Save that up and refresh. So there's our dial and whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I, I don't want a background color of purple on the dial. So how do we how do we deal with this? Well, you can specify in the style that we want to apply these styles only to a button. Button, colon, we'll get these styles. So much like in CSS, where you say this type of tag will have these styles, you can say that the button, with a capital B, has these styles. Now when we refresh, the, the dial is the default dial color and the buttons are purple. Nice. And if we wanted the dial to have certain styles, we would say dial will get these styles. Make sense? Which I'm not going to bother doing. So, uh, let's see, what else can we tell you about style? That's pretty neat, huh? Um, what if we wanted them not to be both purple? What if we wanted one, the first one that gets made to be, say, um, purple, and the next one to be pink. Well, what that would look like is this. We can specify a series. Let's drop this down, doesn't matter. A series of purple and then pink. Like that. So this uses the Zim V value, it's called. Uh, in this case, it's a series to pick from this. Each time a button gets made, the first time it's going to be purple, next time it'll be pink, the next time it'll be purple, the next time it will be pink. We refresh here, and we've got purple and pink. Let's try another button. 200. Now we have purple, pink, and purple. If we wanted that to be blue, now we have the series purple, pink, and blue. Pretty amazing. So we can apply the Zim V values up here to get a uh, dynamic style. If we passed in an array, then it would pick randomly from that array. Refresh here. Uh, purple, pink, blue. <laughs> Refresh. Purple, pink, pink. Refresh. Pur uh, pink, purple, purple, etc. Oh, all purples. Wow. So uh, that would be handy. Now, most likely I, I want a series because the idea with styles is uh, you kind of know what's going to happen. Although you could make art with that and we have indeed applied random things. We could also apply the randomness to the corner, for instance, by going something like min. So this is another Zim V value, a minimum of zero and a maximum of 30. Like that. And when we refresh now, 
and we look. This one's rounder, less round, we refresh again. So they're all getting different random corner sizes. Or indeed, we could have applied a series or randomized it in a different way. Uh, but let's make it zero. So we're back to zero. Now remember that up here, it's, it's more generic. So we can say width of um, 300 and everything will get a width of 300, including the dial, <laughs> which we don't want. We could override it on the dial by going width 100. Refresh. So now everything gets 300, but the dial is going to override the general style. Or indeed, we could override a certain style on the button. We could make this one have a corner of uh, 30. And so we've over overridden the corner that is being applied to the button by applying it directly on the button here. We might also want to have a group of things act in a certain way. So say the last two buttons we want to be round and the first button we don't, as an example. What we can do is say group round. Oops, that needs to be a string. So the group name is a string like that. And then we can apply this grouping to that second button as well. Up here, we can say comma. Uh, the t uh, group, so we specify a group first. So here's where we put all of our groups. And we have round will be uh, corner colon. 30 like that. So this is the round group will have a corner of 30. Are you starting to get mixed up with what's going on here? The width, let's get rid of the width. For say, not that it matters. We refresh that and you can see that the last two, which are part of the round group, are paying attention to this corner right here. That will override. The group overrides any general styles applied to the buttons. But we could still override that here if we wanted to by saying corner colon zero. And now the corner on the middle button will be zero. OK, so you get the idea. Uh, hopefully it works as expected. But there's a few other things here that uh, we might want to deal with. First of all, the style will not be applied to something that's made before we make the style. So if we make something here and then apply the style, it will not be applied to things that were already made. So Zim works a little bit differently in that whatever gets made at the current style will be made like that. Otherwise, it won't be affected. So we, we do have a problem. We might want to make another button, say a button at the bottom right <laughs> or whatever. We've got so many buttons. Or a burrito. <laughs> Would we, I, I think I'm getting hungry. I don't want this to go on for too long, This, uh, but we should talk about a few more things here. Um, maybe another 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to make a new button and we will dot pose this at say 30 comma 30 on the right at the bottom. And we refresh. There it is. Oh, darn, it's gone back to purple. So it, it's doing that series and it's purple. But say we didn't want that to have uh, a corner of zero. We want the default button again. What we can do is turn style off. Style equals, and that's one way to turn the style off. And this is quite common where we know we want to style a bunch of things. But after that, we're making a whole bunch of more things and we don't want the styles that we just applied to that, that bunch of things. Basically, we just turn the style off. Or indeed, we could set another style here. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, label colon hello. H. And we refresh. And there we've just styled from now on anything that has a label property <laughs> will say hello. <laughs> How's that? So, in other words, we've turned off all the previous styles and we've added a new style. So, we can do it that way. Um, Anytime we want to change a style, say we did, let's just take a look at what this looks like. Anytime we want to make a change to the style, say we want to override or change the background color now, we could change it um, 
using the functions or using the object literal directly. So we just have to get in and make a change to something in the button. There is a slight trick though, unfortunately. So I'll, I'll let you know about that, I guess. Uh, this is, these groups are under group. We used to have any, any uh, classes or any objects that we're applying to, we used to put under type like this. So we would store the button, uh, oops, comma down here. Okay, so these are the types and we could put the dial in there and a rectangle in there, whatever we wanted to in there, the types. These are the groups and these are the general ones that apply to all of them. So that's how style was originally made. And we thought about it and it's just a bit annoying to add that one extra layer to get to a button. So we thought about it and said, well, hey, what if we said that anything that starts with a capital letter will assume that it's a type? Because none of these other ones are probably going to, well, none of the, the direct styles start with a capital letter. They're all lowercase. You can probably make your groups with lowercase as well. All right, so that was a, a good assumption. And that's been a lot easier. We introduced, I think, that in Zimcat. All right, that's been a lot easier. We don't have to put the type in. But what happens is when the style gets applied, what we do is we take the style and we, uh, we insert it into the type. We say, oh, that's capital, put it in type. Oh, that's a capital, put it in the type. In other words, our coding, it only took five, 10 minutes to code that. And it was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's great. But what it does mean is style has actually been modified to have the type there. So if we want to access something inside of here, we can access it just by style dot type dot button dot corner or dot background color like this style capital dot type dot button dot corner is equal to 30. So now let's have a look at this last corner that's being made here in the bottom right is going to have a corner of 30 of that last button. Ready? Refresh and there's our corner of 30. By the way, a button is 60 high, so it looks like a nice round corner if you set it to 30. Okay, so we can access it directly like that at any time just to append something or even add something. We could add something at that point. Did we do the label? It still says press, so we could change that to label. Um, goodbye. Well, but just good. So now uh, that has a label of good. Okay, so will any other buttons that get made, if we put another button at the right or at the left hand side, they'll both have good. It's pink because purple then pink, but they both have a label of good. So that's uh, another way to apply styles. But we thought, hey, uh, sometimes people not, might not expect to access this object directly like that. Maybe there might, you know, this, this seems to turn off the style that sort of I don't know, is that a hack? I prefer it, it's nice and easy and short. It's just like I know that now there's nothing in there. So these buttons, if we do that, we just turned off the style and watch what happens. They go back to both being default buttons, just default buttons there, because we turned off the style, quite common. We can do it this way, style, lowercase, or well, it's the class, and we use what's called a static method directly on the style, much like, well, I don't know if you ever use math.random anymore. In Zim, we have rand, so I, I don't, but that was an example, or math.py is using something directly on the math class. We use ticker.add when we, oh, I don't know if I've shown you a ticker. Probably should show you a ticker. Maybe we could do that in the next basics. We'll talk about time, intervals, tickers, and timeouts and stuff. Anyway. Uh, there we are using style and we're going to apply a clear method right on the class like that. So this is another way. This, these two things are exactly the same. As a matter of fact, this, all it does is that. So I comment that out and I refresh and they're still cleared. If I didn't have the style.clear, then they would take on the, the background colors that we had in the corners. Okay, so there's style.clear. There's also other things. Why don't we go take a look at the docs and see um, that there's other things we can do. Like we can add new styles. We can even remember styles and bring back styles. 
uh, but I don't really think we need to get into that for the Zim Basics. However, I will go to the docs now, docs, and look up style here, style. Here it is, style and style. So there's general styles that get applied everywhere, types, groups, and objects. And here's some examples of all of those. And if we scroll down a little bit more, there's this stuff. Style.add is a way that we can add a general style. That will append it to the, oh wait, add a general color red style overwriting any previous color settings, right? Okay, so that will overwrite any other previous colors, but not the other styles. There's removes, there's adding a type, there's adding a type of dial, there's remembering your current styles, then you can do whatever you want and recall the styles. There's adding a type. Um, there's remembering it based on an ID. We can add a group and recall things. Okay. There's also transform styles. So X, Y, rotation, alpha, scale, scale X, etc. All those can be applied as styles. And uh, you could apply the Zim V values to the values of those as well. There's random range over here of the Zim V values. So this is us saying uh, Zim V values. There are some cases, like if we apply a corner, a corner does get, uh, can have a, uh, an array assigned to it. Well, that would mean um, we wouldn't know whether we wanted a random number from there or if it's applying the corner. So if you just said the corner of something is this array, usually that would mean the first corner is zero, the top right is 40, etc. But um, with styles, it would randomly pick from those and wouldn't give you what you wanted. So what you have to do is pass in a no pick object, which is um, an object that says no pick. And then it really means, please make the style that array. Don't pick from that. Okay, so uh, that's a little bit advanced. Don't worry about it if you don't get it. But anyway, there's some information there. We can also style functions. And this is why we could just put new button and not even add it to the stage and we could add it with style. These are the things that you can use with style. Add to, loc, pose, center, center, reg, transform, drag, gesture, outline, bounds, move, animate, wiggle, expand, and cache. So you can do all of those methods as styles. Very cool. And there's a couple of convenience ones. Just add, even though there is no add. We've said add true. We'll just add it to the stage. Move with an M-O-V-E. Uh, pose has corner conveniences, so that's how you can handle pose in style. There's also style false, which turns off all styles for whatever selector you've had. And there's a couple other tricks and stuff like that that you can read about there. It has inheritance as well. And there's some more examples. Woohoo! <laughs> So I think that's pretty good for styles. That gives you the general idea. Uh, what you would do is you would say, oh, I'm gonna make a few things that will all look like this. So I'm gonna make a style up here. And then once you're finished making those things, you turn the style off and then you go make more things and you say, oh, I wanna use styles again. And we find this very handy. You don't have to. You could have put all of the stuff up in here. You could have put it down inside of here. And that's how we did it for the first half of Zim or more. And that's fine too. But now we've got styles. As far as I know, we're the only Canvas framework that, uh, or library, that applies styles to the Canvas. Yay, Zim! Woohoo! And I am Dr. Abstract, and here we are at zimjs.com. I'd love it if you came in and visited us uh, at, in, in our forums here. So we've got Discord and we've got Slack. So uh, come on by and join us in Discord and Slack. Say hello. Uh, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye from Pragma as well. Yay! <laughs> Ciao.